What's up guys, this is Redneck Texan 22 back again with a Halo 4 community gameplay. This time it's Holy Swordsman 99. He's going to be playing King of the Hill on Complex. Now the first thing about any Halo 4 gameplay is to go over the loadouts. Uh, so I'm going to do that here and uh, show you guys what his loadouts are so that you can better understand uh, his strategies and tactics as he's playing the game. So his primary weapon is going to be the Battle Rifle, which is a really good choice because Complex is a close quarters map. It's pretty small, and uh, the Battle Rifle is far superior to any of the other starting weapons. Um, as you'll see, it's he's able to pick off and get a lot of one-shots, getting headshots with it. The AR is also very good, but the Battle Rifle, once again, can get headshots and you can beat people uh, who are using a DMR. Uh, his secondary is going to be a bolt shot, which is good because a bolt shot is very overpowered. You can overcharge it to get the one shot kill like a shotgun, or you can shoot it at a distance and try to pick off headshots. Uh, you can also drop it and pick up another primary weapon as you find. So there's no sense in uh, trying to carry two primary weapons because in a close quarters map, you'll most likely be dying a lot or a lot of people will be dying and you'll, there'll be plenty of ammo to pick up. So having a bolt shot is a great secondary weapon. The grenade will be a frag grenade, which is great because uh, there's a lot of walls and different angles to bounce these grenades off of on complex, and they're also, I think, a little bit more powerful than any of the other grenades. Uh, his armor ability will be auto sentry, which is not something I use a lot, but as you'll see in the gameplay, he manages to use it very well. It's a lot about placement so that the sentry doesn't get destroyed and that it can help you get kills or weaken um, opposing players. So we'll see how he uses that. And his tactical package is shielding, which is very helpful, especially in a game like this. I think this is a multi-team game, so with so many uh, enemies coming at you from different angles, it's always helpful for your shields to reload a lot faster. And finally, his support upgrade is dexterity, which is also good because it allows him to reload and switch weapons much faster than anybody else. So that's for loadouts. So let's go ahead and get started with the gameplay. Okay, so King of the Hill is a great game type to get a lot of kills. Uh, you got to go into it with the mentality that you're not going to win. Uh, you really got to decide winning or kills. And you'll see here, Holy Swordsman definitely goes for the kills. So first thing he's going to do is drop this sentry so that it has a great vantage point to shoot the hill and get a lot of guys weak so he can finish him up with his BR there. Um, and you can see it works out. He gets a quick triple kill. Um, you also see he's playing multi-team, so it's six teams of two. So you're not going to have a whole lot of teamwork. So you got to just kind of play for yourself and think about yourself, which you can see he does a good job because he's just sitting here on the open side. He's not pushing into the hill. He's letting them all be distracted by other people. And then uh, he just prioritizes his target. So when somebody comes up behind him, he turns around and that becomes the main priority is staying alive and defending his position. Uh, and then he can go right back to hill camping, uh, just trying to get kills off of the hill. So he keeps setting up that sentry to get the guys one shot, and then, like I said, the BR is really good for finishing off one shots, uh, which he does a lot in this gameplay. So he's using the ramp here as cover. He's just popping up enough to get his head over to make the kills. Um, and you can see quickly he runs out of bullets for his battle rifle. Uh, but he doesn't panic and rush in just to try to lose his life now that he ran out of ammo. He's just going to sit back wait for somebody to come over to him and, and steal one of their weapons. He's going to let his sentry do a lot of work for him. As you can see, he gets a kill and assist there just off of his sentry. Um, he doesn't want to waste all his scattergun either uh, because it's a very powerful weapon and he's going to need it to defend his position. So you can see here, uh, the purple team is starting to get a little bit raged by what he's doing and they come over and he gets the kill and gets another primary weapon with the DMR here. So very powerful. He's just going to pay attention to his uh, radar, and whenever he sees somebody coming up behind him, he'll turn around with that scatter gun. But in the meantime, he'll just pick off some more headshots. So you can see he's basically stayed in the same area that he started from for about the first, you know, couple minutes of this game because nobody's really coming over to him. He's blocking a spawn and he's creating a spawn situation for his teammate. As you see, his teammate spawns behind him multiple times. Um, now that the hill has moved, you'll, you might see him change positions a little bit, but you notice he's not putting himself in a position where people can sneak up on him. There's only one way to get behind him, and he can see it on his radar, and uh, you'll see him go to work on this guy. So you can see his shields get low, so he backs up for a second because he does have shielding, so he'll be able to instantly recharge his shields, and that gives him an advantage in a fight here. 
Obviously saving that scattergun ammo obviously helps as he can two-shot a uh, flying monkey there. So that was the same guy who came over and died before. So obviously the purple team is getting a little bit uh, on tilt. They're, they're just kind of raging against him right now. And he's able to keep blocking that spawn and spawning his teammate. So still a really good position. But at a certain point, they know he's there. So you can see them try to prenate him. And lucky enough, he's still able to get those kills because he has that scattergun. But he's going to wisely now move um, over to the needler side. <laughs> so you can see, obviously, when you have grenades, trying to prenate a position is very helpful because you can take out their shield. Um, he's just going to get this little one on one fight. It was very good using the cover, getting that headshot around the around the cover, but a lot of times you see he only puts himself, when he directly battles somebody, it's only in a one-on-one -on -one situation. He never puts himself in a situation where he's battling multiple targets at the same time, um, only when they're not looking at him. So, <clears throat> that's just some very good tactics. So just using cover, being patient, waiting for the other team to come to him, and then taking advantage of his superior weapons. Um, got kind of lucky there, he didn't get killed even though he missed a few shots, but getting lucky is usually something that'll happen in any good, you know, gameplay. You always have one or two of those moments. So he's only got one scattergun shot left there, so he drops that for the AR, which is really good at close quarters, like here on Complex. Um, that was a good move, switching to the headshot uh, DMR gun so that he could finish off that guy real quick rather, rather than trying to finish him with the AR. If he would have stuck with the AR, he probably would have gotten killed there. So now he's probably, after a few frantic moments, he's probably just going to reestablish, figure out where the hill is, get reset up, uh, maybe get up, you know, try to pick up some guns. And he's, he's so he's basically trying to reset over here on the needler side, um, which is away from the action, but it'll also give him a view into uh, where the the new hill will be incoming soon. So just good move to take a break from the action. He just had a few close calls. He's going to try to set up here to get some easy kills um, after working hard for those other kills. So he sees the incoming hill is going to be A, which is right in the center. So he's going to try to reset up over by the close side, which is where he was at the beginning. But purple team spawned, and he wasn't able to get away after getting that one kill. Um, so he's trying to go back to what was familiar, but kind of rushed in right as the purple team was spawning. So just a bad bad situation. But being over here at the close side is, not, is, uh, is also a pretty good spot. Um, there's a, a few more spawns, so he might get spawned on, but... He has really good uh, coverage um, into Hill A, which is where he's going to get most of his kills right now. Obviously, setting up that sentry is helpful if somebody tries to come up from below him, because it'll give them a little something to worry about while he can get prepared to attack them. So you can see picking up the multi-kills in the hill, which is a lot of fun when you get to do it, picking up those overkills and triple kills. Um, you can see, though, it runs out of ammo really quickly with that uh, using that BR with the three-shot burst. But instead of just running into the hill, once again, he has the patience to just sit back. He's not going to get as many kills right now, but you know he can use his grenades, he can use his auto sentry. He's even going to use a bolt shot here uh, at a distance, which isn't very powerful. But something you can do with the bolt shot is if you wait for the one shots, uh, you can kind of scope in with the bolt shot and maybe get a lucky headshot. But uh, obviously what's powerful about the close position here is the fact that the grenade launcher spawns and you can see that's very helpful in a hill situation he gets a kill tacular um, so very very helpful but once again runs out of ammo very very quickly so he's back to his bolt shot um, so yeah just setting up in a good powerful position and having patience you know he's set up in a place where a power weapon spawns and he can shoot at the hill with you know relatively no opposition so it's just good hill camping strategy. You've seen it now on the open side and now here on the closed side. And just ultimately his patience to wait for a weapon and taking advantage of his, his offensive armor ability. There's a good example of an overcharged bolt shot, which is great for close quarters, and it gets him another DMR. So it definitely pays off for him in terms of getting weapons. You can see his teammate is also having pretty good strategy of hill camping as well. So he doesn't have to worry about his teammate you know, pushing in too much and dying. Uh, but they are, they're kind of working together pretty well there. So with any hill situation, you want to be constantly attacking the hill as that'll slow the other teams from winning faster. It'll also be where you'll see those congregations of enemies. You'll see a lot of people getting themselves one shot. Uh, a lot of guys will run up to each other and they'll melee each other and both of them will end up one shot. And it gives you an opportunity to steal both of those kills. And 
It's a great way to get the multi-kills. It's a great way to get a lot of assists, too. You just get a lot of stats whenever you're attacking the hill. So that should always, I guess, be a priority when playing a King of the Hill. After staying alive and getting your positioning down, uh, those are just things to think about as you're finding a position. Is, you know, can I see the hill and am I protected? So you'll see here, instead of rushing forward and attacking that green guy, he looks at his map and he sees that there's a lime green guy coming up behind him. And he gets... Uh, two assists and a kill off of that, but instead of running forward and getting shot in the back like all these other guys are doing, they're kind of forming a train there, just running to the hill, getting shot in the back. Uh, Holy Swordsman chooses to kind of hide there on that double ramp and uh, gets a lot of kills. And You can see he's able to pre-nade uh, those kids because he knows exactly where they're going to run. They're being very, very predictable versus he's staying back a little bit. So you can see here he's getting a little greedy. He needs some ammo, so he's pushing forward a little bit. But lucky, luckily he has his teammate with him, and he's able to utilize this kind of pedestal area here as coverage. And he's able to um, stay alive, get some ammo, and get a few kills while he's at it, too. So you can see he could tell that that guy was, he was getting pushed from uh, both the first floor and the second floor. So he took, um, he took a wise move there, pushing up to the center, because he knows there's no... Um, hill right now in the center so nobody's really in the center of the map so he's able to go to a normally populated area when the hill was off to the side like that so the other thing you'll see especially in multi-team usually there's a few people who are going for kills and a few teams who are going for the win and a lot of times the teams that are going for kills will get mad at each other and they'll start raging on you and trying to kill you so as you can see with purple team so just you know be wise just back away um, you know, let them be too overly aggressive because usually whoever plays more passive will win in a rage situation. Because um, when people rage, they usually get extremely aggressive and they push in when they're weak or they just push in and try to grenade their feet and everything like that. So just run away, be patient, get yourself, you know, maybe pull out your bolt shot and you'll be able to win those situations most of the time. So you can see here he's choosing to kill... Um, the purple team in the hill rather than the guy still moving to the hill because he knows they're not a threat to him. They're just going to keep moving to the hill. Um, so it's always wise to kill the hill first. You can see obviously throwing explosives into a hill is extremely powerful as uh, you get a lot of uh, multi-kills that way. You can hit multiple targets with one grenade and then finish them off with your headshot weapon. You'll notice that Holy Swordsman's always staying near um, some sort of cover, whether it's a ramp or a pillar or a wall. He's, he's always using color, uh, cover and um, just trying to reposition himself around the map to get kills while staying in cover. So the AR is also a really good uh, close range weapon on this because it's just, you know, since Halo 4 came out, it's always been a very overpowered weapon. Uh, definitely made a lot of um, increases power since Reach. Um, so definitely want to take advantage of something rather than just complaining that other people use it against you. Just go ahead and take advantage of that overpoweredness. <laughs> so you can see right now he's on the needler side and he can shoot at, uh, at the close side and he can shoot towards the center. And uh, he noticed that that's where the purple team was setting up uh, for their kills. So he was able to get um, a few of those kills on them, making them further get mad at him. Uh, you can, so you can see he's inconceivable. It's 25 kills now without dying. Uh, he recognized that he's fighting a purple player, so he knew that they were going to come after him and avoid the hill. So he gets a little teabag in there because he was able to predict what they were going to do um, and change his strategy accordingly. So once again, just a few notes about this gameplay is, you know, uh, you just really got to have that mentality of working on your KD and getting those kills over winning because it's pretty hard to do both when you only have one teammate. You can see that Holy Swordsman ultimately loses that game, but, you know, he ended up winning because he was able to get 68 kills and only died one time. So um, you just have to decide, you know, what you're going after and then, uh, you know, you can set up your strategy accordingly. So the biggest points of what you saw him doing there was hill camping, which was his placement. Uh, he would put himself in a position where he could always shoot the hill, and he was relatively defended. Usually there was only one way to sneak behind him, and he would have that way blocked with either his sentry or he'd have a very powerful secondary gun like a scatter shot or a bolt shot or an AR for close quarters if somebody did try to push in behind him. Usually those spots are near initial spawns because it allows you to block 
the other team from spawning behind you, and it allows your team to spawn, giving you some extra defensive help if you need it. Uh, he had a lot of patience. As you see, he didn't just rush in when he ran out of ammo. Instead, he just kind of waited and let you know, the game come to him, and he was able to get a close quarters kill with a secondary gun and pick up another headshot weapon uh, and go back to hill camping. And even though it can be frustrating watching a lot of people in the center going for hill time and getting kills, you know, you still saw he got 68 kills in that gameplay, so it's not like he was hurting for kills. That patience allowed his KD to go up. I mean, you could still run in there, maybe get one or two more kills and die and respawn with a new weapon and ammo, and you can you might get more kills, but if you're really working on KD, uh, you need to have that patience to stay back. He took advantage of rage players, obviously Flying Monkey and most of the purple team. Uh, they would choose to go after him rather than going for hill time, so you just got to change your tactic. Uh, when that happens, you know, you see he would run and hide, he'd use his shielding to his advantage there, and he would be able to switch, use dexterity to switch to a very powerful secondary weapon and get the kills. Um, also his radar usage, uh, if you notice when he is hill camping, primarily he's looking at his radar to see if somebody comes up behind him. So just practicing, making sure you understand, uh, especially on complex, how to tell when people are below you or above you or on your same level based on how it looks on the radar. Um, and just the priority of targets, as he would shoot people in the hill, but when somebody would come up behind him, he would completely ignore the hill, and he'd just turn around, and staying alive was obviously his priority. So those are a few things to review. Uh, if you like what you saw here, make sure you send him a message or uh, subscribe to this channel. Uh, and um, if you have your own gameplays uh, for any playlist in Halo 4, uh, just send, um, put it in your file share, and then go to Halo Waypoint and get the URL from your file share, put it in an email to rednecktexan22 at gmail.com, and uh, I'll look over it, and if I like it and I think it's commentary worthy, I'll uh, get in touch with you and I'll, I'll throw it up on my channel. So, yeah, just remember to subscribe and comment if you like this. And as always, have a nice day.